Greetings, everybody. Something doesn't doesn't feel right. Wait, I'll be back. Ah, that's uh, that's a lot better. Today, I'm going to finally talk about mandrake. Mandrake is a notorious plant that is very often mentioned in magic and alchemy, and yes, it is mentioned in Harry Potter. No, I am not going to be talking about Harry Potter today. And mandrake, although it is most popular for its root, it does have a fruit. This is mandrake fruit. And you can even see the mandrake fruit in my t-shirt, which is a very old illustration of the mandrake where you've got the root and the little fruits right there. Available on my website, weirdexplorer.com. Uh, <laughs> this fruit was sent to me by Siri. Siri, thank you very much. I've been wanting to try this one for a very, very long time, and uh, I'm excited about it. A little concerned, but excited about it. Why am I concerned? Let's talk, guys. Ever run into a scam online? <laughs> yeah, of course you have. Especially with the holidays coming up, you can't be too careful. With people shopping more, there are more scammers out there scamming more. You might end up buying a pair of slippers for your grandmother's Christmas present and then accidentally give your credit card information to a hacker. Protecting your online information is very important, and that is why I use Surfshark VPN. VPNs encrypt your data so you can browse the internet privately. This protects your information so you can surf the web safely. If you sign up now, you can get 85%, yes, 85% plus three free months on a 24-month plan. It's an incredible deal, so check it out. You can click the link in the description below or the QR code that is on the screen right now. If you don't do it for yourself, do it for your grandma. She needs those slippers. Yes, I am going to taste this fruit. However, I'm going to put this out there right now. Do not try this yourselves. This video is for educational purposes only. This is something not to be taken lightly. It has the nickname Devil's Apple, and it's called that for a reason. The mandrake plant contains a whole cocktail of different toxic compounds, ones that are kind of similar to that of the deadly nightshade, which is related to mandrake. Most of the toxicity of the mandrake is in its roots, its leaves, and its seeds. So if I were to take this fruit whole and start munching into it with the seeds, you know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get really sick. So uh, yeah, great care has to be taken if you're going to be eating this thing. And even then, there isn't a whole lot of information about consuming mandrake fruit. So why would I try something that is so dangerous? Well, people do eat it. I have found accounts of people eating this thing. How I understand it is that this probably does have those compounds in it, but at a much lower concentration than the other plant parts. So it's not the sort of thing where I think you can just like make a jam out of it. If you were to do that, uh, especially with the dangerous aspect of maybe getting a seed in there, which is you definitely don't want, uh, it, it w might give you more of that compound, which you don't want to be eating. And uh, also, every plant is different. Sometimes a plant will have more of a compound than another plant. And also, everybody is different. So some people might be more susceptible to a poison than another person. There are too many unknowns for me to say, hey guys, this is edible, go eat it. I don't think it is. I think this is edible in small quantities in this particular circumstance of me making this video, but I wouldn't really push it. So uh, yeah, don't try this at home, guys. First though, let's talk about the incredible history of this plant. This has, for a very long time, hundreds of years, been tied to magical practices. And the reason for that, at least one of the big reasons for that, is that 
When you pull this out and you see the root, the root is very often forked at the bottom, so it looks like it has little legs. So uh, people have seen this as being kind of like a humanoid sort of plant. Old anatomical illustrations of the mandrake exaggerate these features just a little bit. In these illustrations, there is both a male and a female form, and it is believed today that those descriptions are of two different species. The male is typically Mandragora officinarum, and the female is Mandragora autumnalis. I was sent Mandragora autumnalis, which means that it's from the female root, if you look at the old illustrations, which means I am trying the fruit that is on my shirt. I'm excited. Now for all the gardeners out there, if you are interested in growing the mandrake, according to these old texts, in order to grow the mandrake, you need to take the blood and the semen from a hanged man and put that on the ground, and that will cause the plant to grow. Harvesting the mandrake root is not exactly easy because when you pull it out, the little root person will scream and that scream is so loud and so blood curdling that when you hear it, you die. So, oh, and also when you die, you're damned to hell. I, I, it's, just, it's just how it works. But there is a way around this. According to one account written by Philippe de Thon in the 12th century, here's how you do it. The man who will gather it must dig about it, softly and gently, so that he does not touch it. Let him take a chained dog, let it be tied to it, which is ravenous and three days fasted. Let bread be shown it, from far let it be called. The dog will pull it, the root will break, and will utter a shriek. The dog will fall dead through the shriek which it heard. And if the man hear it, on the spot he will die. Therefore he must stop his ears and take care that he hear not the cry, lest he die just the same as the dog will do if it hear its cry. Whoever has this root, it is potent as medicine for every sickness. It can bring healing, except only for death. Then it has no force. That last line is important because if you pull this out and you start dying, you can't just start eating that root. It's not going to work. It doesn't cure death, it just cures everything else. So you gotta let the dog die. There's no way around it. I'm sorry. Another reason why mandrake root is so often tied to magic rituals is that it contains a natural hallucinogenic and deliriant. So when you eat it or make a potion out of it, it'll make you trip out. In researching this, I found a few instances of people actually doing this today. And from what I understand, it is um, not recommended. They didn't have a good time, guys. Don't do it. So trying to sleep on mandrake is no fun. The dry mouth, the restless legs, constantly feeling like you have to piss and you can't, and oh, I was just miserable. Besides like magic spells and stuff, it has also been used in like medicine, like actual scientific medicine, because this can be applied to uh, rheumatism, to help rheumatism. It has been used also as an anesthetic for surgeries. Not anymore, and uh, I think that actually does have some credibility because uh, looking online, I have saw a, a blog post of somebody who was uh, harvesting the mandrake and noted that her fingers turned numb with handling the root. It's hard to talk about the mandrake without talking about witchcraft stuff, and um, yeah, I'd say like half of the websites I came across were like uh, Wiccans and uh, just people who use this stuff for spells in the past and even today people use it a lot. Uh, one of the interesting things I found historically is that this was used in potions for uh, witches that wanted to fly. So they'd take this potion in order to fly. And after learning about all the hallucinogenic and delirious properties of it, I wonder if, you know, that flight was, was happening up here. They also were popular in amulets. People would carry around a little mandrake root with them as a, a kind of protection. This was such a popular practice that there was a problem of people selling fake roots. They would sell like a carved piece of wood or a root from a different plant 
and pass it off as a mandrake root in order to cheat people. Bootleg mandrake roots is still a thing because uh, in my research I came across several websites selling mandrake root and then on further inspection realized that it was American mandrake, but they would list the properties of regular mandrake. American mandrake is not related to actual mandrake. It's just a, another common name for may apples, which I've reviewed on this channel. If you're gonna make a spell, you don't want to use may apples, guys. It's just, uh, it's not gonna, not gonna work for you. Okay, uh, let's eat it. Okay, so I have uh, three mandrake fruits here. Uh, two of them look like they're going a little bit bad. So I'm not going to try those ones. Uh, this one here looks pretty good, though. And as you can see, it's got like this long uh, stringy bit here where it attaches to the plant. Which is interesting because it's even like, it's in the old illustrations where these things are kind of like popping out of the head of the humanoid figure. So it's kind of cool to see that. On the end here, uh, this appears to be a bit of the, uh, the flower. So let's peel back those petals, and inside there's a little orange fruit. And this does actually look a little bit like uh, belladonna, which is one you do not want to be eating, uh, except those are black. So that separates from uh, the leaves there. On the very tip of it, at the very bottom, there is one, two little stringy bits coming out. I've seen it recommended to break it apart with your fingers. That way you don't break the seeds. Because as I mentioned, those seeds are very poisonous. So I do not want to eat those seeds. So I'm going to just kind of peel back the skin of it. I'm not sure if the skin is, uh, well, edible, but uh, less edible than the, uh, the flesh. So I'm going to remove that and then carefully with this knife, I'm going to pick these seeds out. They look like tomato seeds. Just doing this carefully. I don't want to like cut into it because I don't want to break the seeds. Because the seeds are quite small. It'd be easy to miss one of these. This is like preparing fugu, but with a little berry instead. Alright, so let me... So I think this little piece here is plenty. I'm just going to check it for seeds. Yep, there's one. So, there we go. I have a little bit of the pulp. I removed all the seeds from it that I could find. And uh, the skin as well. And just, like, doing this is kind of tedious, you know? So I can see the danger right there. <laughs> like, if this flesh is edible and those seeds aren't, it'd be very, very easy to accidentally get one of those seeds. The smell of this is, um, it's like, uh, pepper jack cheese. All right, let's give it a try. It doesn't taste like poison. <laughs> so the flavor of this, well, first let's break it down. It's, um, not sweet, maybe just mildly. It's like a one out of 10 on sweetness. It's not tart. It's like a, no tartness to it. So zero out of ten on tartness. It's maybe like slightly bitter, but not really. Bitter the way like a bell pepper is bitter. It doesn't exactly taste cheesy, but it does smell cheesy. The flavor of this is, um, well it's not bad, 
but it's not good either. It's not something I can see really going out of my way to, to eat this, especially if with all like the precautions to it. But even if this were totally fine to eat, it's nothing to really write home about. And the flavor of it is a little bit like an orange bell pepper and a little bit like a Cape Gooseberry, also known as Goldenberry, also known as uh, Ground Cherry, etc. If you haven't had one of those, it's a little bit, little bit like tomato, little bit like apricot, a little bit like pineapple. This has those notes, a little bit of tomato, apricot, and pineapple note, as well as uh, bell pepper note, only without tartness and without sweetness. So it comes up kind of flat. Honestly, not the most exciting thing to eat flavor-wise. But one thing that is exciting about it, that history. I mean, it's insane. I, I'm really excited to have gotten a chance to try something that is so important to history. I mean, I have it on my shirt. I know I keep pointing out the shirt. Uh, this time without any sales, like, I have this on a shirt for a reason. It's really cool. <laughs> it's a cool plant to learn about. Like, I do not recommend eating it, but I do recommend learning about it. It's, it's something that has been around for so long. There's so much written about it. You know, you gotta take it with uh, just a tiniest grain of salt, but it's still such like, a fascinating thing. So uh, this has been really exciting for me. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you once again to Siri for sending this to me. And um, I'll see you all next time. If I start like tripping out, I'll let you know, but I, I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, bye guys. I would like to give a big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Lofty Rex, and JMac. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon, I'm sure you've heard about it, but basically it is how I can afford to go on all the adventures that I go on on this channel and how I buy all the fruit that I buy. So if you are interested in supporting the channel, check out the link in the description below. Another way to help out is by going to my website. My website has all my videos organized into categories, which is pretty cool, and I also have t-shirts for sale over there. So check it out, and I will see you all next time.